G'day folks. I thought I'd give you all a little bit of a gander at um, the mind map behind me there that I've been working on. I posted a picture of it a while back and I thought I'd just give you a bit of a brief overview. I'm not going to delve right down into it because obviously there's some topics there I don't really you know, uh, want to let known to the general public. So I thought I'd just do a general overview to give you folks some sort of an idea on the sort of um, topics I want to cover in the manual. And after that, I'll give you a bit of a look at a uh, visitor we had in the backyard this morning. Uh, the butcher birds let me know there was something a bit dodgy going on. So anyway, I'll stop uh, nattering on and we'll check out this mind map. To begin with, what we have here, if I can remember how to move things around and zoom in a little bit, is the basic outline for topics to be covered in the book. I'm actually going to be delving into things a little bit differently. Um, some of these things are doubled up, like there's some location information in the starting a system, and obviously infrastructure has a lot to do with starting a system. So uh, this is just my way of filing things at the moment. So what we do have, we'll start down the bottom. We've got co uh, pros and cons, uh, services. So that's uh, just basically your power and water supply to the aquaponic system. And then we have infrastructure structure, the bits and bobs that actually go into making the aquaponic structure, and we'll expand these in a minute, uh, starting a system, uh, climate and location, the fish, apparently they're a pretty big uh, part of an aquaponic system, and then down here we have ecosystem and biota, which also includes water, because water is chock full of life. So we'll zoom in, and we'll expand these one by one and have a quick look through. So building a system, just the sort of things we need to um, think about and plan. Uh, things like tools, components, apparently two lots of components and it's even spelt incorrectly. Might be a few spelling mistakes in here. Uh, plans and the layout of the system itself, this location. And then you've got to think about things like cycling the system, um, the ammonia or ammonium source, and other nutrients for the plants if you decide to plant them out. And then buying the components itself, which actually will be linked eventually um, all the way down to this infrastructure bit down here. Um, but yeah, for the time being, it's um, yeah, just by itself up there. The next section, we have climate and location. So just things we need to keep in mind, like the aspect where the sun comes, um, up and travels over the system and the property, the geography of the property. Uh, if you have a lot of trees, creating shade, that sort of thing as well. Uh, your general climate, what you can grow, fish-wise and plant. Accessibility, which is a pretty big thing. Um, covers things like the height of the system. If you have people who are vertically challenged, like my beautiful wife. Um, and what, oi, I just got <laughs> caught out. Uh, walkways. Um, around the system so you can access it with your, your wheelbarrows or whatever you need to uh, move around the system. Things like grow, grow lights, depending on where it's set up. Um, earth insulation, um, using it to your benefit. Indoors, if you want to set up indoors, I know a lot of people who um, set up their systems indoors, garages, in basements, um, even in kitchens. Uh, Anthony's got an awesome one set up in his kitchen. I've used some of his pictures in other videos. And then, yeah, enclosed greenhouses, shade houses, uh, so from there, we'll look at uh, the main drivers of the system, the fish. So here, you know, you've got to cover things like um, the food, uh, the types of food. Uh, obviously, you know, you can't fi feed the same commercial feed, or you, you can, but with uh, differing results. You know, if you have a catfish feed, trout or barramundi or Asian sea bass don't do as well because they're high energy fish, where catfish seem to be a little bit slower. Um, you know, different food sources, lived and processed animal sources that you can provide yourself. And also things like um, plant-based um, feed that you can either grow or obtain. And then we're running down into the different spish, uh, spish, fish species. Uh, obviously here in Australia we have things like trout, um, sorry, silver perch, uh, jade perch, murray cod, sleepy cod, tandanus catfish, honey perch, barramundi. And they're pretty much well the natives. And we have things like the trout, uh, the goldfish, um, koi, um, in some states, not all so, uh, states, random ornamentals and carp can be used in different places. While other places like America, you know, you folks over there can use tilapia. We can't use them here. They're illegal. They're a pest species, um, but they're also introduced in America as well. But yeah, there's different fish there that you can use than we have. Obviously, you have your own um, natives there as well. So. 
Yeah, it's um, quite a lot of um, fish species I'm going to have to track down though. Uh, things like Asia, I know the basics for Asia. And Africa, I know some very basic ones from Africa. Just what I've seen, actually, there's a few ornamentals that should go on there as well. And then hatcheries, going into, you know, what to look for in a hatchery. And then we go on to things like the fish requirements. You have clean water, obviously, uh, temperature requirements, pH requirements, which you need to balance alongside with your um, plants security issues with the tank and then we go down to the health of the fish you know disease parasite stress daily checks and you know just ideas that i will be covering in the book um, the mind map for you folks who don't know is basically just something to dump all the ideas um, so you at least get them down on paper and then you can come back to them later and flesh them out a bit more um, along with the fish you know you've got the obvious stocking densities biofiltration volumes of fish tank things like that and um, harvesting your fish in storage. Obviously, I haven't included a lot on that one yet. There's no little um, arms like this one to expand, but obviously you're going to be looking at the purging, ikijimi, and things along those lines. So, yes, quite a lot there. And uh, down to the ecosystem, which I've broken up into the three, the plants, the biota, and then the water. And we'll open up the plants first, obviously, the plants themselves, what you can use in the system, the pest control issues you may have with them, shade requirements that may be needed, uh, harvesting of the plants, and also including a few other bits in there on harvesting, like um, um, saving them and what you do there, uh, propagation of the plants to save yourself a few bobs and how you can obtain some. Obviously the water requirements for the plants as well that <laughs> needs to be built out a bit there, sort of covered in other places as well. And then uh, the pH adjusters, obviously plants do require um, nutrients and some of these nutrients come in the form of pH adjusters. Um, you can add in hydroponic additives, kelp, seaweed, you know, all the basic things you see people add in on their um, videos on YouTube or posts on social media. Uh, Molders chart, um, that's an interactive guide, a basic um, interaction guide, sorry. It shows where there's a little bit of um, conflict with the elements that you add in. Uh, for instance, if you add in a load of potassium, you can have magnesium uptake issues and things like that. And then with the plants, um, obviously um, the, the media that they need hasn't been um, fleshed out yet, sunlight and pH. Now onto the biota, and the biota doesn't necessarily just have to be the nitrogen based one, uh, like the, the nitrous ammonas, nitrous spire and nitrobacter. Um, you have things like slaters, um, just common things we've had in the bed. I haven't um, expanded on it too much obviously, but slaters, fungi, all your pest species would go down there as well. Compost worms, which is something we've added in. Bacteria, not just the nitrifying ones down here, but other ones as well. And then we'll move the water to center screen. And here we've got, you know, things we've got to common sense, make sure they're um, chemical free. It remains within a certain temperature range, certain alka alkalinity range, um, things to watch out for, algae and what it does. Um, Parasites, bits and pieces that you can get in systems, not necessarily, I haven't never seen mosquitoes in them, but people claim they have, midge fly larvae, different bits and pieces that may um, interact with the system, maybe make um, nutrients available, available, maybe not, um, but things like that. I just realized how long this is getting, so I'll try and speed this up, folks. Um, and then we go down to our testing, commercial um, testing, when you send it away and then your home test kits, things for like pH, uh, total available nitrogen, iron, um, your KH. Then over here, uh, pros and cons, pretty, pretty self-evident. Um, you see lists like this all over the interwebs. And then we come over here to the infrastructure. So obviously we're going to need grow beds and then I've got a uh, bit of a list here of different grow beds, um, materials they can be made from and then growing systems. Uh, different ways you can actually um, use these beds to grow plants and set them up. So you've got wicking, your towels, NFT, DWV, and media beds. And then your actual overall system types, like your split flow, like we run, single loop, basic, uh, decoupled, reclaimed aquaculture waste and pond, and then just, um, just different components there, which is all pretty common sense with a few that have been elaborated on a little bit more. And then we come down to filtration. Um, you have your different forms of filtration, your settlers, drum filters, screen filters, upflow filters, uh, subtopic yet to be named filters, <laughs> biological filters. Then down to pumps, again you've got your water, your air and your waste pumps. I've separated waste pumps out because um, people are curious about why I use them and how I use them. So I'll be talking about them. Um, air pumps, air lift, um, water pumps and also you know just your straight O2 pumps. It's getting a bit windy here, sorry for the background noise. 
and then we get into our pipes and plumbing um, you know your fittings your pipe your hose work you can use and then the fish tanks which again is pretty self-explanatory most of the people have seen some of these on YouTube or one of those Facebook groups so um, yeah uh, that's what it looks like so we'll just zoom out and recenter and that's pretty much all what it looks like and I'll quickly expand all these and just give you a bit of an idea on how much information is actually in here. So there you go, folks. That's what it looks like all expanded out. I think I've missed expanding a few of them on there. But as you can see, all of those topics have a load of more information that is required to um, help explain them and to expand on aquaponics in general. So um, that's pretty much all where I'm at with that. Um, just over the last couple of days, I've been focusing more on the guide, um, our backyard aquaponics guide. I'm pretty much all going through all the videos and using the transcripts to create PDFs, locked PDFs that will be um, downloadable from the different modules on the guide um, for folks who have intermittent um, internet access. I've had a couple of people say that they don't have internet all the time, so they'd like to be able to download the guide so they can read them. Um, so I'm not only just um, working off the transcription, I'm adding in extra information that will help people out. And not only that, I can then use those topics um, for the creation of different bits and pieces in this actual um, mind map or as I turn it, put it in Scrivener and turn it into chapters and sections in books. So it's, it's all wor working, everything I'm doing is working towards the books. I mean, I've even found old PDFs of um, handouts that I've given at talks a couple of years back. And a lot of that information there has given me a great idea for how to include that into the PDFs for the guide to um, add a little bit more value there. So there you go. Um, that one there is actually the chop and flip one. I've been working on that today, uh, trying to get that knocked off. And I've got to add pictures to them and all the rest of it. What you saw on that quick little scroll. Um, yeah, a lot of pictures do need to be added because there's a lot of stuff that needs, would do a lot better with visual explanation in those PDFs. And again, uh, that stuff will be expanded on further when it comes to the book there. So there you go. Uh, just before I go, um, we'll give you a quick little look at our visitor. How's it going, folks? Thought I'd bring you out to show you a bit of a visitor. I heard the birds going off and um, saw what they were going off about. And I'm not too sure how well I can see him. It's all right, Butchie. I know he's there. Just climb in underneath the shade house here. And it appears we have a nice big carpet snake on the roof. And there's his little noggin up there. So, what do you reckon? You reckon I might freak him out if I touch him? Uh, these guys are pretty placid. So these, these are the ones that will um, take care of any rodents. They also love birds as well. Uh, flying foxes, possums, I'd say one this size would possibly take a possum. So there's his tail over there. And then he comes up over there and I realise I'm very close to his cloaca so I might move. So I'd say he's probably around about two metres as tall as me. So yeah, I'll see if I can get a better angle to show you his pretty colours. I went up to grab the ladder, he buggered off on me. He's up in the tree now. So that's a little bit disappointing. I would have liked to got a little bit closer to show you his colours. And you can hear the Mickey birds or their minor birds go off. And there's also the butcher birds squealing as well. That's um, I don't know if you can see her up in there. Oh, there she is. That's Lady. That's the one that comes to the veranda. So she would make a very tasty little snack for this fella here. Oh, I'm really annoyed that all the batteries for my proper cameras are um, flat. Otherwise I could get you a much better look at his beautiful pattern. Zoom in there with the phone, but yeah, it's looking a little bit grainy. You're not really a fan, are you, love? So there we go, a little bit of excitement in the backyard this morning. So a little scaly mate is just down there still in the mango tree. Uh, every now and then the birds go berserk so we know he's still there and hopefully he won't um, yeah, snack on any of our little butcher birds. We've actually got the young ones visiting the veranda now at the moment so 
pretty stoked about that. So I do hope that you enjoyed that little bit of a look, folks, at um, not only the book and what's going on with that, but also um, our little scaly friend down in the mango tree. Uh, just to let you know, um, the book is a work in progress and it will be quite a while before it's finished, but I am looking at adding those um, PDFs um, to the guide in the very near future, um, well and truly before it goes up in price. So yeah, a little bit of extra value for you folks who are looking for something to read as well as just something to watch in the guide itself. But I will pretty much will leave it there. I just want to thank, actually quickly, you folks who have bought the guide. Uh, not only that, those folks who are continuing to support us through the YouTube membership platform and also the patrons we have over on our Farm Your Own Yard site. Thank you very much for the continuing support. Next weekend will be a hangout for everyone. So um, yeah, um, that'll be in a couple of days by the time this gets uploaded. So look after yourself, folks. I hope your gardens are booming and I'll catch you later. Cheers. Happy growing.